Well, hello to 8W. I hope you've been getting on with your Places of Worship project. I look forward to reading and marking those um, that are due on the 14th. Um, so uh, that is um, hopefully something that you've done. And today in the lesson, we're going to be looking at the four sites. Uh, these are experiences that uh, the Buddha had when he was around about 29 years of age. Um, and they transformed his life from being the son of a king or a local sort of chieftain to being a holy man. And they're the real pivotal point of his whole life. Now, one question we've got to ask really is, can you get through the whole of your life till you're 29 without experiencing any suffering? You know, we're led to believe that any horses that were lame were kind of taken out of sight of the Buddha. Anyone who's sick was kind of whisked off left stage. Um, it's just implausible. So it's a, it's a mythical account, but it's trying to say that having lived a very sheltered life, the Buddha was in shock to see the four sites. So according to the tradition, he grew up in a palace and his father wanted him to be a king a military ruler that would expand the kingdom. And so he was very worried that the Buddha might get into wisdom and uh, he might become a holy man. This would not be good news for his political ambitions for the kingdom to, to grow. And that was the reason he sheltered him in these palaces to kind of keep the, the world of suffering and pain out of mind so that he wouldn't be given to compassion and reflection and inclined towards becoming a holy man. But he was curious and he went on these trips outside to see what was beyond the walls of the palace. And that's when his charioteer Chana takes him out of the palace and they see these four sights, an old man, a sick man, a, a corpse and a holy man. And he becomes enlightened as he sits under a fig tree or a pipal tree um, for the different watches of the night. Now, here's another uh, visual representation of this. Here is um, the, the Buddha with his charioteer, Chana, and uh, the charioteer is explaining to him that this is an old man and that he has like everyone, uh, years on the clock, and uh, we all get old, and the Buddha will be no exception. And then he sees um, a, a sick man who is um, displayed in various ways in, in Buddhist art. Uh, here is his charioteer taking him through, and he sees uh, the, the, the impact of suffering on people's lives and how it goes from old age and sickness to death. A corpse is being taken um, to be cremated and the Buddha is shocked and alarmed at this and then he sees a sadhu, a wandering holy man. Now of course we question the historicity of this, this is a kind of uh, mythical account that's written much later, but Siddhartha returned to the palace having seen such sights and he says to his father, why have you lied about the existence of suffering, sickness, poverty, old age and death? Um, Shuddhadana, the king, said that if he lied, it was because he loved his son. But Siddhartha said that his father's love had become a prison. How can I stay here when there is so much suffering in the world? I have to do something about it. Siddhartha visited his wife and son and they slept um, there. And then he said goodbye and he didn't wake them. He, he left the palace in the story of the life of the Buddha the whole palace had fallen into a deep sleep and the Buddha and his charioteer are able to leave the palace. There's an explanation of it here from an academic who goes into some more detail. So what's the importance of the four sites in Buddhism? Buddhist philosophy, as we're going to unpack in the next two or three lessons, um, is encapsulated in the three universal truths that suffering is universal and inescapable that there's no permanent uh, self and that everything is impermanent. And then the four um, noble truths that we'll look at 
and they all unpack uh, the causes of suffering and how we might overcome suffering. But let's just focus on these four sites and what they tell us first of all. The old man who's weak and frail uh, reminds the Buddha that he too will age. He's not invulnerable because he's of high rank. Um, he too will grow old. He's mortal. And the sick man shows that he's vulnerable. Sickness is no respecter of persons. Um, it can, as we're tragically seeing with coronavirus, it can, it can affect people um, of, of a wide variety of backgrounds. And the corpse um, is also an indication of our mortality, something that Buddhism is very upfront about, that everything is impermanent, the self is impermanent. This is something that Buddhists are reminded again and again of, their mortality and the need to hold life um, loosely in that sense. And then there's a holy man, first of all, a, a wandering sadhu. Now, this is a tradition within Buddhism um, and Hindu society of people who'd renounced worldly possessions and uh, ambitions of kind of, you know, high career or a high office. and um, this was called going forth or the great renunciation. The Buddha cut all his hair off uh, as monks do today. And he joined several other ascetics, uh, kind of holy people who were pursuing uh, their own enlightenment. And uh, the fourth sight really leads him to reflect because when he sees the corpse and the sick man and the old man he, he it awakens compassion within him a sense of empathy towards other people and a sense of um care for the human condition and so he believes that if he goes forth and joins these ascetics he will gain a wisdom that will enable him to overcome suffering and to gain enlightenment now the question you've got uh, is first of all to write a short diary. What would it have felt like? Imagine that you're 29, you've been kept in the palace, you're totally isolated, your dad wants you to become a political ruler, to expand the kingdom with a mighty army, and you've kind of smuggled your way out of the, the palace with your charioteer, and you come across these four sites. Um, what does that feel like? What impacts you? How, what emotions come to, to mind? Empathy, compassion, um, a sense of solidarity with people that are suffering. So you've got to write a short story or a diary account to say how you would feel and get your emotions, uh, the shock of going from the very secluded world of the palace out into um, a world where people are more prey to the, the, the ordinary uh, sufferings and vulnerabilities of life. And the second question is to evaluate whether the Buddha is a good role model for people today. So on the one hand, um, he selflessly goes in pursuit of a solution to the problem of suffering. He thinks that he can overcome suffering. And he's going to suggest that a lot of our suffering is caused by desire. We want more stuff and we become greedy. And because we don't get that, then um, we are saddened. Um, or, you know, desires for, for greed and desires for hatred. Sometimes people want revenge and um, that, that impulse for, for, for violence is, is something that's very bad. And the Buddha says, you know, this is something that causes a lot of suffering because somebody gets violent, then another person gets violent and you get an escalation of violence. So we need to get rid of these desires of greed and hatred and lust and ignorance that often drive people. They're kind of poisons that uh, infect life. So the Buddha is going to leave the palace with the ambition of finding a solution to suffering and death. Because in Buddhism, of course, there's reincarnation. So you die, you're reborn to more suffering, you die, you reborn to more suffering. And this is an endless cycle. And the Buddha believes that if he goes out of the palace and becomes a holy man, he can break out of that cycle in what's called nirvana or enlightenment. So there are many good things about the Buddha. There are some bad things, we might say, because he left his son, young son Rahula, who 
when he came back later on, became a monk. So maybe that makes it all right that he came back with the enlightened wisdom, passed it on to his son, and his son became a monk, and all's well, that ends well. But maybe abandoning his son was not such a good thing, and abandoning his wife with a young son is something that was wrong. Uh, I'm sure his father urged these responsibilities upon him, and he was, of course, um, going to take over his father's kingdom, so maybe he had a duty there. So try and think about arguments for and against the Buddha being a good role model for people today, and then come to your conclusion. That's the task for today. And um, if you have any questions, then do post them up. Please be sensible on, you know, asking questions. It's a classroom, not a chat room. So only ask questions that are relevant to everybody. Um, but uh, I wish you well with that task. And I look forward to marking your um, projects on places of worship when they come in.